let's move on to some of our Q&As that, that have come up regularly in the group. So this is a handful that kind of clumps around hydration. Should you hydrate with your polish on? Anna. I, the, the 411. I, I am one of these people who don't, and I can't. Now, some people love doing it, but because I'm not good at capping my tips every day and I do get tip wear, I find that then the oil gets in and sort of, and because it, it, even though it kind of glues the layers together at the same time, it pushes the, and it breaks the bond with the polish for me. So I do intensive hydrations with naked nails between manicures. But you do apply it daily with your pen with polish. I do. I do. Oh. And actually applying it to the polish and rubbing it into the polish because the polish is not solid. It does have porous little holes. And, and it's so it dry. It does. Polish dries out too, which is why for those, why the longer you wear the polish, it sort of seems like the more C curve you get because the polish is drying and you'll also get these little fine hairline cracks in it. And that's because the polish is drying out. So you can sort of extend your time um, by hydrating your polish as well and you'll sort of reduce that premature cracking. So, but there are other people, absolutely, their skin is so dry, it's whatever, however your nails are, but they love doing the hydration. It doesn't matter whether you've got polish on or off. And for me, when my nails are in a state like they're in right now, ultra peely, I need to do them naked and I can't do overnight hydrations because the extra sweat um, pushes my layers apart. When my nails are healthier, I can do it with polish on and the overnights. But right now, both my skin and my nails are just like, oh, we're so whiny. We're so high maintenance. It's and we're a hot house flower. Right. And we're in real summer right now. So yep. obviously the temperatures are more. And like, I can't, if I'm, we talked about this before, I think, but I, yeah, we sweat more. Um, I can't do intensive hydrations for very long when it's really hot because then um, it's, I start to sweat through all of that oils. It's funny and weird to say, but you can sweat through the oil. Yep, especially yet sweat of hands like me, classy. Yeah. Uh, can you hydrate too much? Yeah, there's a level of saturation. Um, so yeah. hydrate too much in terms of hurting? No. I don't think it really hurts. I think but it's just, wasteful. It's, yeah, you're going to get to a point where it's like, well, the body's not going to absorb anymore. It's just like if you drink way too much water, you're just going to flush it right back out. So, yeah, your body okay. can absorb so much. Yep. So and, let's go ahead. Wait, you did, how often should you do a mini before Manny? Did we talk oh, about that? Did we, we skip that? Well, we're going to talk about that next. Okay. So in the ultimate nail care routine, we've gone through this before. Uh, and every winter, you should start every winter, whatever your we, your season is, your cycle. It's a great time to just do a, an intensive hydration. Like chalk those babies full of all the oil you can. Even in the fall, as your nails are drying out and getting more brittle, you're going to want to increase the amount of time that you spend in the gloves and hydrating those babies. Right. This is the general step. Intensive. I've talked about this before is like... When you first start with hydration treatments and using the oil and everything, you don't realize how much you have lived with dry nails and that's what you're used to. That's what you think is normal. And then once you get used to hydrating them, it's like there she's hydrating with water. Well, once you get used to how that feels, your nails will talk to you. You will actually feel that they're getting dry and you'll know. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. You'll know that it's time. They need, they need a hydration treatment. Just like in your garden, when you see your plants start to wilt in the sun, you know you need to water them. So your nails are giving similar signals of like, hey, kind of thirsty over here. Mm -hmm. uh, so just pay attention to them. Listen to the nail line. <laughs> uh, it's going. So after you do your intensive, step two is the Fab Five wrap. Step three, you want to oil two or three, two to six times daily, at least two minimum in the morning and at before bed um, or whenever you're, you know, and, and then once you get bored of your, your manicure, you remove it, excuse me, and then start over again. So in between every manicure is the perfect time to do a mini before Manny. Yeah. yeah. Even if it's just an hour uh, so or even 20 minutes, like I've done that too. Uh-huh. And it's, it's just very helpful. 
-hmm. then you wrap them back up in fab five and then do it all over again. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is really the core of it. So oil daily mini before mani fab five. This should be your regular routine. Like we've said so many times, your nails do not need to breathe. And the fab five is really important because remember nails have three sides. Nails have three sides. Tip top gotta, bottom. Let me show you that you one. Wrap quick. it around. You got it. Bottom. Layer base coat and a layer top coat wrapped around the free edge if you've got it. If you've got it. Oh, come on. Here we go. Come back. Do that. Nails have three sides. Tip top bottom. Well, so that wrap is really important. Mm -hmm. All right, back to where we were. Dirt, 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 dirt. Um, all right, so monthly, you're going to want to remove your cuticle from your nail plate. Yeah. Uh, we have videos and articles on that. Mini or mega hydration every three to four weeks, at least once. Mm -hmm. Trim and file your nails to the desired length every three to four weeks. And again, unless you're going for Cotton gloves, um, this is, a, you know, a lot of people talk about this. Um, if you have sensitivity like I'm having right now to all of the things, cotton gloves will work. It, it's breathable, it's a non-irritating fabric. If you have super sweaty hands, that's a good option. Um, just put a little bit of, of cooking oil or olive oil or something in them to add a little bit of oil so it's not just wicking away all of the oil that you're putting on there. And we were talking about the body balm would be a better option than the lotion stick because it has a higher percentage of beeswax. So it's not going to be absorbed by the cotton fibers in the same way that the other stuff is. So again, work with what works for you, like mm -hmm. for real. Um, yeah. Okay. Some of the other questions that came up, shrinkage and polish and top coat. Dealing with shrinkage is interesting. Um, and it, everybody's different because, you know, Sash Veet is really a, it's a quick dry polish and some people absolutely adore it and never have problems with shrinkage. And then some of us do. And I don't have problems when it's a brand new bottle, but I do when it's a half used bottle because it's gotten a little thicker. And so it, it sort of shrinks as it's drying and, and the solvents are releasing, um, so it's kind of, it's a bit, and I think it's weather as well. So here we get back to seasons. Mm -hmm. um, the warmer the weather, I think it helps the solvents release faster. And so it's going to pull the polish this way and shrink it. And so and from your free edge. Lisa Carter in the group, she po posted a thread about this the other day of, she ended up figuring out through everybody's comments and we troubleshot it, of she was taking too long to apply her, her top coat. Oh, and so she was a little more generous and, and just got it all over the cuticle line and everything like that and did it quicker and then cleaned it up and then she was having mm -hmm. less shrinkage. Interesting. Yep. Yeah, and it's really important to make sure that you've got that cap, at yep. least capping that edge because then it helps kind of anchor it. So. And what I found on my nails where they're peeling right now, of I have to be very careful when I'm capping my edge because if I get too much on the top, it will actually catch and peel it back even more. I'm like, oh, goodness, oh, goodness, oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so for me, I have to have keep my top coat thin. So mm -hmm. as I get towards half a bottle, I need to use my nail thinner and thin it out because as soon as it gets thicker and goopier, that's a thicker layer, one thicker layer that's going to peel back. Yeah. Yay. Yippee. Yeah. Woohoo. Um, or an okay. organized polish. Uh, Not in the fridge. Not in the fridge. It's just a waste of fridge space. It doesn't do anything uh, except make it cold. And then actually you really need it room temperature in order to apply it because if it's cold, it's going to be thicker. You don't want that. Because uh, it'll take longer to dry. And yep. yep. And Doug Shoon, author of Nail Structure and Product Chemistry, says that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and so for the um, also polishes, uh, unless they, some of them have UV uh, reactive, non-reactive things so that it, the, your polish doesn't um, bleach out. Uh, so, but polish the pigments and everything, they're sensitive to light. So if you can store them in drawers, cool, dry space, you know, the typical thing, recommendation. Um, I do have some that I store on the wall, but I've stored them on a wall that does not get direct sunlight. So I am 
open to the fact that I am sacrificing mm-hmm. some of the pigments, but I like looking at the rainbow. So, um, but I definitely, I have most of my polishes in drawers. Sorry, mom can't talk to you right now. She's wondering why I haven't talked to her yet. Because <laughs> um, uh, Kirsten and I have been working for quite a while putting this together. Cool. So I'm looking at all of my drawers and the way I store them is I organize them by brand and then I've organized them by the number, the, the product number, the last three digits that are on the product number. And I put a little sticker on top and then I also have swatch sticks with that same number so that I can see the color, go to my drawer, find it by its number very easily, and that's how I store mine. But And you have the IKEA Alex? What, what are the... Yes, they are the Alex drawers. That seems to be a pretty popular one amongst nail bloggers. Yes. Um, Don't get full transparency. I do not. Not I, everybody does. I get 50% transparency. That's it. So... so- Half of my nails, and even if I soak overnight and do that hydration, I only get 50% transparency. So it just depends on your nails. Mm-hmm. And how frequently you've done it. We've had several of the gals in the group, they've done it the first three or four times and nothing. But then after that, their nails start to get a little more transparency too. So, you know, just how much do your nails need to soak up? Mm-hmm. Um, we had a gal, I don't remember her name, who was had a question about getting her nails to stop breaking. I am recording right now, sweetheart. Do you need something real quick? Yeah, can we go to mom's? Um, No, unless you can be back in 15 minutes. We'll stop and get something to eat on the way. Sorry, guys. Yay, Mm -hmm. Friday. Um, She was filing her nails, even with the crystal file, like all of the stuff, and it was still making her nails peel and break. And she was wondering for some, for some insights on what could be going on. And I gave a couple of things. So Anna, what's your, and I didn't have photos. She didn't post photos of it, but. That's um, one of the things I got to see them. So oh. some of the variables is um, people are asking, were, were you polishing with, you don't have time. Why? Why will, why do you need to be back in 15 minutes? Yeah. Because we need to leave to the ferry. They're going to visit dad. Dad. She's yes, go. Visit dad. So we're trying. Right, to- is all your stuff ready to go? <laughs> it's okay. You got to do the mom thing. <sighs> so um, things that I would consider. So someone asked, "Are you wearing polish because polish can add additional strength mm-hmm. when you're filing to help keep those layers together?" So that was a good tip. Yeah. Um, right. If they are peeling like that, you might try a hydration treatment before you file to saturate the layers with oil. You could also try putting like super glue on top yeah. or a nail glue to again, do the same thing that the polish does to try and hold those together while you gently file them down. Um, and you know what? Your nails may just be hosed like mine get. And sometimes when I file them, <laughs> it's just like, oh, well, okay. it's what were you doing four months, four, ago? four to six months ago of what, what's, and and go back to week three of the things that you control in your greenhouse, diet, stress, if you can, um, nutrition, take supplements, the biotin can be very helpful. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we have a whole article on, that Honor wrote on Nail Care HQ that talks about nail strengtheners. And when that would be appropriate, that may be an appropriate thing for you. And to I do. think it's, uh, you know, I, I talk about people think I'm against you nail know, strengtheners. And in that article, which was my first very long article of 300 words, 3000 words, sorry. Um, I was like, if you get to the end of it, congratulations, you've won a prize. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, but at the end, I say that nail strengtheners can be very good for people who have very thin nails, can't seem to get that free edge. And what it does is it gives, you've got overly flexible nails. So it's got enough to hold that together and make them less flexible so that you're getting the hardness combined with your own natural flexibility. And so that can help. And so I think, and you've been taking, you've been using a nail strengthener and have found it helpful. It has been helpful. I'm trying to find that. So I think for people where I, that article, when I was writing it was because I was seeing so many really popular nail blade bloggers talk, they loved certain nail strengtheners, wore them all the time, but their nails were continuing to get longer and they were still using the strengthener and it was making them too hard. 
So oh. it's, it's that you want tough nails that's strong and flexible. And you don't, if you don't keep them flexible by oiling the longer that they get, if you keep hardening them, it's, you're more prone to tear like you would if you're bodybuilding without stretching, those muscle fibers can tear. Same it's with your nail. Balance. Very fine balance. It is. Okay. And then, uh, you know, like you're talking about, it changes from the season. So you got two seasons you're dealing with. You're dealing with the, se the actual season of the, the of our globe. And mm -hmm. then you're also dealing with this model of what we're talking about, of the season of your own nails. Yep. So. Um, okay, so that's the nail strengtheners. And then one of the gals posted, my nails feel sore, almost bruised when I take polish off. I get this sometimes. Let me give you my guess, and I'll let you say what your 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 thoughts are. My thoughts are, when I have that sensation of like, ooh, it feels weird. And I think this is probably why people are like, you need a nail break. Their nails need to breathe. They're like gasping for air. No, they're gasping for oil. <laughs> like they're so dried out. And then all of a sudden they are exposed to the air. And if your nails are thinner like mine, I guess it could happen with thicker nails too. But my main guess is that they're dehydrated. Well, actually what it is, good guess. Okay. Almost, almost there. Um, what actually, and this is of course my hypothesis, is that you have used a polish as an extra strength. Okay, so the polish is holding your C curve or whatever. Hmm. Um, the polish is holding your nail at this this curve. Okay, then you take it off. You take that polish, that strength, that, that five layers of polish off, and your nails relax because they are fluid. They do have liquid and oil in them and but so what happens is you've got this it's being held and you're naturally relaxing and what that's doing is it's pulling the nail thing is pulling up on the nail bed so it's, the nail bed. it's your nail bed that's hurting and so it the way to stop it is ignore it for a little while it will go away or get polish back on it and make your nail go back to that c curve and then that pressure will be taken off. So it's probably somewhat similar to when you have a too tight ponytail uh -huh. and your roots of your hair hurt. So yeah. if you're, okay, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I think oil can definitely help with that. It's like, okay, uh, let's get them a little bit more hydrated and then that can take the pressure off as well. Yep. Okay, how to deal with breaks. We have a ton of great articles on how to do this. So as you are, it's like, what, I broke a nail. When do I repair it? When do I chop it? How do I deal with the painful damage? Well, what season are you in? Because that's really going to determine it. Like if you have tears and peeling going on in early spring, you're going to need to deal with it in a different way than in fall. Like if you're in fall, you're, it's time to just chop them off and start over. You need to prune those babies and get them ready for the winter so that they can we, regenerate and start over. We talked about this, but you sometimes may never get to summer or fall. You may yep. just be pinging back and forth between winter and spring. And that's, you know, that's like if you live in the North Pole or Alaska or somewhere like Chile, very far south, you are closer to the poles of the earth. You have less summer, less winter. The seasons are just shorter. You have a longer winter, shorter summer, and that may just be your lot in life. And so analogy. buy some cute mucklucks, you know, it's like, do <laughs> like we, it's, and it's so great in, on Instagram, there are a whole bunch of short nail bloggers that look very lovely and they deal with it and they just work with their length of season. Yep. So normalize it. We don't all, we may not all get this, like even hair, like your hair has a, a growth cycle and that's when it will start to fall out. Um, oh, so great. some people have a very long cycle. So those are the ones that get their hair down to their knees. Mine will never get longer than about the middle of my back. And it, when it gets to that length, it starts to look kind of seedy and it's like, cause it's the hairs are falling out and replacing themselves. So work with what you got. Work yep. with what you got. So we have. Well, and on that little note, yeah, uh, we lose on average a hundred hairs per day, which is why short people don't notice it um, because it's just short coming up. Short, short people. Short. I'm hair. short, and yeah. <laughs> you've got long hair. And right we now. both experience this where we take out our ponytail and we start running our fingers through our it's hair. Like, 
and we get a fistful of hair. Well, it's we're getting the same loss, but it just looks like a ton of hair to us because it's not so out during the day. Yep, for sure. So, yes. Um, articles, right. videos, lots of great information. We have over a hundred videos. There's like nine, we're almost to a hundred on the blog. So to wrap this whole 30 day challenge up, um, the most important things is know your nails and your seasons. Mm -hmm. Period. We're going to ask you more, I think in the, in the, the nail bar of like, let's just kind of just show off and what season are you in? And it's okay. And it's okay. So we'll be working on that. So I, I encourage you guys too of, of when you post a nail break photo, talk about what season you think you're in and then we can discuss it and we can help troubleshoot it a lot better that way when we know what season you're in. And then once you know what season you're in, you can adjust your nail art accordingly. And mm -hmm. then remember, one of the most important things is just be curious, experiment. Let it be okay if you need to switch things up and try a different style or a different whatever or a different routine or, you know, like we talked about last week, the only constant in life is change. Yes. Um, it's true. It is. And then most importantly, be gentle with yourself when you're in between seasons because, you know, this is this, this analogy of, yes, we have these images right here, but there are all of the in-between phases and it's like a day-to-day -day basis. 30 days yeah. make up a month. It's like all of these days, like little ticks of minutes, make, make the five minutes, make the, all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just be like, you know what, like this too. I mean, I don't know if anybody can see, but my nails are short. I haven't cut them this short in a long, long time, but I'm going to Maui and I don't want to deal with them. Don't, I'm going to be floating in the water, looking at fish and um, remembering how loud fish are because they're constantly <laughs> chewing on coral and you, you think it's quiet. But no, it's screamingly loud, That's but I'm going to be floating in water. And so it's like, I don't want to deal with the peeling and the polish. I know they're going to peel. So what the, but, oh, but I will take my gloves and I will do hydration treatments. So, and that's a perfect example of doing the best you can with what you've got and enjoying life. Yeah. Enjoy your lives. That's what we want. Need a um, vacation. vacation. <laughs> so, joy is in the nail bar moving forward. Yeah. Like if you have ideas, like I don't know what nail art I should try. You can try the poll feature in the group of what color should I do and then have everybody vote or, oh you know, God. just talk to us. It's fun. It's what we're there for. And it's, you know, that it's our community. It's our tribe. So. Yeah. Thank you everybody for participating in this challenge. It's been fantastic and insightful and educational. So and um, it's been really, really great to have, my gosh, we're almost at, we might be at 700. I haven't looked today. We're almost at 700 members in the bar, which is wonderful. So um, stay active there, hang out with us, share your wins and your losses and your new polishes and whatever else is going on. And, and remember, remember to ask. And somebody says, yeah. help me remember to ask questions. Yep. I know so many of you are so good because we can't solve anybody's problems and we can't support them and help them unless we have a big, vast information about what the heck is going on in your life. Because yep. it usually comes back to what were you doing four to six months ago? So uh, stay curious, <laughs> stay clever, stay creative. <laughs> and we'll see you in the bar. Yes, we will. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.